Hello and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 325. Today, we're going to talk about paradigm shifts, those moments when something kind of blew up in your mind and you start to see the world differently. But first, my name is Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host. I'm the founder at Whistlekick. We make some great stuff, products. We've got some services. We've got some free content, including this show. And we do it all for you, the traditional martial artist or fan of the traditional martial arts, however you term yourself. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for giving me your ears. All right. Now, let's move on. Let's talk about this topic that I'm really excited to get into. Here's the impetus for this. What is the alternative? What is the opposite of not experiencing paradigm shifts? It's not growing. It's being stuck in the same old belief patterns that you've always been in. If a paradigm shift is seeing the world differently and in a dramatic way, not a slow, gradual way, but kind of all of a sudden seeing things take light, the opposite is being stuck in darkness. And if you're on social media, if you at all follow anything, in the world at all, including martial arts. You see people that are so stuck to their beliefs, that are so buried in the sand, that they don't grow. They don't progress. They don't become better than who they've ever been. And I think that that's so sad. Now, here on this show, we've had a lot of paradigm shifts. I've experienced quite a few of them, and some of them have even happened in the midst of a conversation with someone else on the show. One of my favorite things about this show is that it exposes me to a lot of different people with a lot of different beliefs, many of whom believe differently from me. You see, I believe that if you can't keep an open mind about your beliefs, about all of your beliefs, and talk through them with others, have an open, intelligent conversation about them, to bat the pros and cons of the way you see things versus the way someone else who sees things differently might, to effectively spar in a mental way, then you don't have any right to those beliefs. Every one of your beliefs should be tested, should be tried, it should be examined again and again, just as we do with our martial arts technique. If you've been training for 30 years and you say that the way you punch is the best way and the only way for you, and the last time you worked on the mechanics of your punch was as a lower rank belt, well, I've got some news for you. There's room for growth. There's room for progress. Because as you grow, as you get better, there is more to learn. At least there should be. And there is nuance that you can delve into. Whether it's mental, whether it's physical, there is always the opportunity for progress. Now, we live in this really interesting time where people are artificially creating these circumstances where paradigm shifts may occur. It's not an area of expertise, or I would even say an area of interest for me, but there are podcasts I listen to where folks are talking about plant medicine, effectively using things like ayahuasca and and such to open their mind. And of course, we have the cliche of 60s drug culture. And that was really the goal, at least as far as I understand it, because I wasn't there. And again, this isn't something I get into personally. But the idea that there is more, that we're looking for more, we're looking for that growth, is something that is really attractive to quite a few of us. And it's something that Ironically, I see happening less and less as people get better and better in the martial arts. Now, this is not some kind of judgment of society as a whole, because this show is not about society as a whole. I do see some parallels in the way people train and the way the world goes. And you know what? That makes sense, because we as martial artists still exist in the world. We are still human beings. We're people. And we are just as 
fallible, just as corruptible, or just as influenced, maybe that's a better word, as everyone else. We're, we're people. We're real. We're here and we're going to stumble. We're going to fall. But hopefully, we're going to grow. Now, here on the show, I've talked quite a bit about some of the problems I see with ego in the martial arts. But let's cast that aside for a moment. Why wouldn't you want to get better? Why wouldn't you want to do more? Why wouldn't you want to be more than you were yesterday? Now, I suppose that there's a a scary element there because the unknown can be terrifying. And I suppose that if your self-esteem is fragile, the idea of being better than you were yesterday may say that yesterday you weren't good enough. But when I look at the martial arts, when I look at my time training and having conversations about martial arts, I am so excited to have my opinions blown up because I am not so stuck to my opinions as to believe that they're all right because I know I am so much more than that. Whether I'm examining myself as a human being or a business owner or a martial artist or any of the other titles that I could wear, there's a lot more to me than some things that I think. And I'm willing to put everything that I believe out for examination. Because I think that that's the only way that you can grow. If I go to seven martial arts classes and I learn how to throw a front kick and I know how to punch and I believe that that's all I need to learn about martial arts and I'm so committed to that belief that I never go back, well, that's kind of a ridiculous example because I don't think it happens. But at the same time, isn't that what a lot of us do with a lot of our beliefs? We are so bound to them that we won't have discussions about them. We won't examine them. When we talk about forms or sparring or self-defense or basics or... Man, I even saw some argument the other day about whether all martial arts drills needed to look exactly like martial arts scenarios. And there were people claiming that if your drills had nothing outwardly to do with martial arts, that they didn't belong in your class. Hmm. Calisthenics? Balance? Doing push-ups? Meditation? I think for most people, those are outside of the formal definition of the combat aspects of martial arts, the martial part. But I think the vast majority of people find value in them. I would love to sit down with the multiple individuals who were having this conversation and the folks that disagree with me. I wanted to know more. But what would have happened if I had commented in the soulless forum that is social media to question them? Most of the time, these people will get defensive. Most of the time, it turns to argument. And unfortunately, as the host of this show, I can't be seen in a way that people think we're, I'm, I'm picking on them. I'm attacking them, which means the majority of the time, I can't even attempt to initiate the conversations I want to have on social media. So thankfully, I have this show because I get to speak to people in voice. I would go insane if I didn't have this. Because for me, challenging others' beliefs, and by extension, allowing them to challenge mine is such a fundamental part of who I am that I believe that is why I've gotten to where I am. Most people would consider me a fairly experienced person. I know a bunch of stuff about a bunch of stuff because I read, but more so because I have conversations with people who are really smart. And I lay out everything that I think I know and I allow them to blow it up. There are folks who have come on this show who have 
change the way I think about certain things. The, the one I'm thinking of right off the top of my head, Sensei Richard Hubbard, who's become a great friend, a very, very smart man. And we've had amazing conversations before he was even on the show. He and I had one of the best back and forths on social media I've ever had. I still remember it. I remember the subject. And I'm not going to talk about it because it was about someone else who had been on the show. And we were able to have that conversation in such a way that neither of us felt attacked. We didn't have to defend our positions because of our own egos. He attempted to share his point of view based on all of his experiences and beliefs and his perspective on the world. And I did the same. And in the end, he understood my side and I understood his side. But my perspective had changed. I hadn't completely abandoned my thoughts, but I now saw things a little bit differently. Because let's be honest, opinions, the world is not nearly as black and white, as much of a dichotomy as the media would have us believe. We don't have to sit in one of two camps on every subject. There are an infinite number of shades of gray. And the recognition that we are all in those gray shades makes things so much easier. So the next time you're having a conversation with someone and you find that the two of you disagree on a subject, whether it's martial arts related or not, let go of your ego. Give yourself the privilege of the opportunity that you're wrong, that you find what you had believed to be wrong so you can grow and become a better person for it. And if you're not willing to do that, if you're so tied to a belief, I would encourage you to examine why. Why is that such a fundamental part of who you are that you're not even willing to go there? A little bit more introspective than we normally do on these Thursday shows, huh? This was something I wanted to talk about because I wanted to wrap my brain around it a little better. And I am blessed that I have all of you to listen to me as I think, sing, think things out. There wasn't even a lick of outline or even any thought beforehand. I just said, oh, I got to talk about this. Well, I hope it came through well. I hope my point was expressed clearly. If not, I guess I'll have to do a follow-up with an outline. If you want to reach out to me, go ahead. Email jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick. And if you haven't gotten on the newsletter list, I would encourage you to do so soon because uh, we're going to let you know about some new stuff that's happening. Some new products that uh, some of you have been asking for. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for opening your mind and your ears to my words and my beliefs. I look forward to talking to you again. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Thank you.